Hey, 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 how are y'all doing? Please let me know if you can hear me clearly. We're getting ready to get this party started and we do have a special guest coming. I'm sure that you all can guess who she is uh, because she was with us for part one of this vintage dusty drill. Shout out to Nyla of Grown Woman Vibes. Sorry, I'm messing with some bubble wrap <laughs> down here. Uh, excellent. Let me know if you can see me clearly whilst we wait on our lovely guest. Uh, she might show up in the chat just in case I will drop the link for her. How are y'all doing on this evening? Let me know if you were here for part one. Just say yes, I was here. No, I was not. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's having a wonderful day after Valentine's Day. Did y'all have a great Valentine's Day? Hey, Alicia, I'm just minded. I'll say some hellos uh, for just a couple of minutes whilst we wait on our guest to get here. And uh, we're going to get right into this, y'all. We're just going to say some quick hellos and then get right into it. Ty is here. Ty was late. My apologies, y'all. Is it Denise? I'm reading it like Denise. Hello, pretty young lady. Delicious hair. Hello. Thank you, Janice here. Glad she made it. Dropping those magnifying glasses in the chat. If you are a part of our squad here on this channel, the time, drop some magnifying glasses for your girl, for me, for Ty, so that we can uh, get into this drill. Hi, Terrence James. How are you doing? Glad that you're in the house. MJ Breeze. Is that New Jersey Breeze? Hello. How you doing? Thanks for being here. Hi, Sharita. How are you doing? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Hi everyone, all the way from Brooklyn, New York. You know, Brooklyn, you don't even have to ask. They always just kind of shout themselves out. And I appreciate that. Whenever New York City, any of the boroughs are in the house, just let it be known that they are here. And I love that about you. Hey, Diamond Pearl Jim, Diamond Pearl Jim, you know I love you. I'm still going to come on camera and do something so that I can cook in my Aruba um, apron that you gave me. Maybe I'll have to prepare an Aruban dish on camera so that it all works out. Hi, Miss Kim. Indy is over in her bed, scratching herself. She's so gross. Y'all might hear her drinking water. For those of you who don't know, Indy is my pit bull dog. She's not a two-legged child, so it's okay that she's a little bit gross. Okay, so I'm just going to start this video. We're going to get right into it. Hi, Kelly. If I don't get to say your name, I'm not trying to not acknowledge you. Hi, Sharon from Lakeland, Florida. Yeah, shout out where y'all are from. Hi, Ebony. How are you doing? That is Malcolm and the Grand Reaper. Look, we're going to get right into this. So let's just talk about this. So if you were here for part one, we were going over the Nicholas brothers and how they became dusty husbands. This is a really good documentary, and I will post a link for it in the description box of this video if you are happening to catch the replay. Um, and I posted it already in the description box for part one of this. But um, I love the history that it's giving on them because, and I love one thing that uh, our co-host is Nyla pointed out when we went over part one, we always have this victim mentality for black men, especially coming up in a certain era. And you know, anything before the Jim Crow era, we, you know, we went out like they were just poor and downtrodden and slay, you know, straight off of the plantation, just with you know, their pockets turned inside out with nothing coming out but lint. But these guys had a phenomenal lifestyle in the 1930s during the Great Depression at a time when even most white men were poor and broke. These guys were like living the life. So I'm glad that she pointed that out and she is here. So let me bring up our guest hostess, Grown Woman Vibes. Hello, how are you doing on this evening? I'm good, how are you? How are you? I am good also. Okay, so we're about to get into part two. Um, if you remember where we left off, um, then you'll remember that we were just getting up to the talk about the wives. And mm -hmm. we were, uh, I think, getting ready to find out about Fayard and um, his wife. And y'all, the way that he found out, or that, yeah, actually that he found out, the way that he found out that his wife found out that he was cheating on him with one of those fine European women that they love so much, it is amazing. 
Um, so do you have anything that you want to open with before we get into playing part two of this documentary? Oh, no. Um, oh, just no. let me know. Is my audio? My oh, audio. no, my audio is kind of echoing. Echoing. Let me see. Are you echoing? Yeah. Uh, is, okay. yeah. is it an echo for y'all? Because it's not coming through as an echo for me, but I might need to put my headphones on. Let me know. Or do you have the oh, echo oh, cancellation on? I'm pretty because sure. I think mm -hmm. when you have a person on, I can't remember how it goes, but. Okay, let me uh, check this out. Hold on. Okay. I think yeah, it's gone now. I, oh, wait, on. Yeah, it's really. Gone now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't do anything but check to see if I had it on, which I always do. Yeah. I keep it on. Yes. Yeah, Is it? Now. Do you hear it now? Because I don't. Nope. Like as soon as I pop that screen up, you said it was gone. Okay, yeah. so let's go ahead and get started, y'all. Um, and let's talk about it. Let's see. I'll put us down here. And uh, Nyla, Miss Grandma, and Vibes, if you hear something that you want me to stop so we can give commentary or you can give commentary, let me know. Everybody, y'all, thank you all again for hanging out with us. Um, I will just be putting your comments on the screen so that I can acknowledge that I do see you in the building. All right. Here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I got a gal. Okay, before we go on, how is that coming through for you all? Is that coming through clearly? Do uh, you hear an echo? Because if you do, I might need to put on some headphones. Could y'all hear the Naker alphabet? <laughs> yeah, it's fine for me. It's fine for you? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, sounds clear for Jana as well. Okay, thumbs up from Delisha. Excellent. All right, so let's go. And of course, here comes Indy. Indy, you get away from me. You were supposed to be asleep. Thought that I wore her out properly before we started, y'all. My bad. And thank you for the um, the member note. You know, they don't these don't come through on StreamYard for us anymore. So I'm gonna read it from Scar Beauty. Uh, I was waiting for this one. Yeah, I kept y'all waiting a long time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's been a long time. We shouldn't have left you without a dusty drill to drill to. Okay, here we go. Well. In Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. By 1942, the Nicholas brothers were among America's most famous black entertainers, thanks to their stunning specialty numbers for 20th Century Fox films. The Nicholas brothers had tremendous impact, and specifically, I mean, for black people. Black audience would go to see a movie and know that they were going to see the Nicholas Brothers and feel that kind of pride. That was um, Harold running away from child support payments. <laughs> Kids are wondering. Now, no. Um, <laughs> listen, um, so just in case you were not here for part one, one thing that neither of us deny was that these men were amazing dancers. So it's never to be haters or to take away from their talent. Um, these guys as far in, in my book, and, and I don't think that Nyla would disagree, in my book, as far as tap dancing is concerned, these guys were it. Um, so, yes, they were talented, and this is the channel uh, among, I know, Nyla's as well, where two things can be true at one time, and that's why I appreciate her as a content creator, because there's not enough people who are um, willing to discuss nuances and things, and so... That's all that this is, just a conversation that's hopefully based in reality where we can have a little bit of fun. Mm -hmm. And I must say, it was, yeah. I think, the irony of um, Gregory Hines being in this, I think, is really good because um, he was such a good dancer, too. Um, RIP, to, RIP to him, too. He died early, I believe. Yeah, he was young when he died. I don't remember exactly his age. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Michael McDonald fan, and uh, I can't think about, you know, Jeffrey, uh, I can't think about him without thinking of their song, Sweet Freedom. Uh, just mm -hmm. was a huge fan of it. Shine, sweet yeah. freedom, shine, love. I'm also an 80s, you know, kid, 70s no. baby, old as hell, 80s kid, 70s baby, yeah. So, and I that. really love oh. his song with Luther too. Um, the song he did with Luther Vandross, that's one of my favorites. Yes. What song? Uh, put, uh, do you know um, the name of it? 
There's nothing better than love, I think. There's nothing better than love. Uh -huh. know what could you ever be thinking of? Yeah. It's better by far. So let yourself reach for that star and go no matter how far to the one you love. I love that song. Love, love, love mm -hmm. that song. Ah, such a beautiful song. And their voices are almost seamless in that song. You very, know? very similar. That was really, uh, that was really trippy about that video because I think, because you know, that was the 80s when everything had a mu music video. And I think prior to seeing the music video, I assumed that all of the, vo the vocals were done by Luther. It was until I remember right. seeing the video that I was like, wait, that's Gregory Hines singing in that too? So yeah, a lot of people didn't yeah. know it was a duet. Yes. Yep. I was one of those people who didn't mm -hmm. know. You know, I'm like, he's gonna tap dance in this. This is not a good tap right. Dance. <laughs> 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 oh Lord. <laughs> okay. But yeah, do I do love that um, Gregory Hines is here as well. And I uh, have to acknowledge before I go back. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Amber for the chat that is super. <laughs> we appreciate every dime. Thank you for supporting content creators like myself. Um, I might split this with Nyla. I don't know, I have to see. We're just gonna have to see, you know, uh, what what the Lord says. I'm gonna see what the Lord puts on my heart, okay? <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that so much, I, I truly do. Okay, let's get back into this. Uh, let's get to the part where they're dusty, all right? Here we go. But their talent could not protect them from the shadow of racism. Their color barred them from even entering the Fox Studio Commissary. Humiliated, they drove home for meals until Daryl Zanuck learned of the brothers' demeaning situation and insisted they be allowed inside. For Harold, life at home was also filled with tension. The born lady killer was flagrantly unfaithful to his lonely wife, Dorothy. I wanted to be a big man, you know, show that I was, I wasn't just a youngster or something, you know, and I was just horrible. And I, and I loved her, you know, but I was too terrible. Um, okay. So for those of you who don't know, I think most of us here will probably know that um, Harold Nicholas was Dorothy Dandridge's first husband. And I'm glad to hear him admit that he was horrible to her. That is putting it lightly. Um, but again, if you were here for the first part, then you know that I was kind of, uh, I think both of us, uh, Nyla and I were criticizing this narrator because he doesn't really put a lot of responsibility on these two guys. And do you notice, Nyla, how he's saying that life at home was just, you know, tumultuous, um, but it was but it was his fault. <laughs> right, he didn't right. Get that one. Well, like you, at least, you know, the devil isn't always a liar. At least he told the truth that, you know, this was his, you know, that this was his own doing. And I find it ironic that him wanting to be a big man was equated with, um, being philanderous and being a womanizer. Right. Like, what about, you know, standing up for your wife and your child right. and taking care of her? Like, isn't that something that big men do? I don't think. You know, that like, that's big man energy. But sure, let's just equate it to cheating on our wife. Fine. Here we go. On screen, however, the brothers never made a misstep. And in 1943, they filmed the sequence that sealed their place in cinema history. Fox's all-black musical Stormy Weather featured Lena Horne, Bill Robinson, Fats Waller, and Cab Calloway. But it was the Nicholas brothers who stole the movie with the dance number Fred Astaire once called the greatest ever put on film. I think the stormy weather number is like Shakespeare. 
they begin like champions. Doing some very interesting tap steps. And they jump up on the orchestra stand. Step up on the stand if you don't pay child support. Oh, okay. Um, again, their talent is undeniable. And this is probably one of my, this is probably like my favorite dance sequence that I've ever seen filmed. Dusty Husband's Exquisite Dancers. Uh, I love this dance sequence. That's beautiful. That is really beautiful. I mean, they bring the dance to the music and then they dance right inside the music. I think the stormy weather number is like Shakespeare. They begin like champions. Doing some very interesting tap steps. Okay, so first, let me apologize. <laughs> so there's construction going on all around me, and we are having, like, blackouts every now and then, or, like, it's just, like, cutting the power. And that has not happened on a live yet. It's been going on for weeks. They're building a new road. Um, so this might happen again, but if it does, just stay with me. Thanks y'all for staying. I'm so sorry. Sorry, uh, Nyla, for getting you kicked out. Oh, cool. I was just wondering. I was like, was that me? I didn't, I wasn't sure. No, okay. that is me. And this is the first time this has happened. This is so frustrating. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, I thought it was because I was using my phone. Okay. No, no, uh, it, it's me. So sorry, y'all. So if that happens, my bad. <laughs> just stay with me. <laughs> okay, here we go. And they jump up on the orchestra stand. That's beautiful. That is really beautiful. I mean, they bring the dance to the music and then they dance right inside the music. Dun -dun 
and they stop and they jump on the piano. exit camera right to that beautiful white staircase. They play with us, they do three or four splits, they go back, they come up without using their hands. So when they head up on the right side of the staircase, it's beautiful, it's so beautiful. I mean, every time they land, that could be a beautiful picture. And then, they come down. We never realized it, but we could picture in our minds what we were really supposed to do. And we start doing it. Uh, one step right after the other, over each other's head. I get chills. I cannot lie. <laughs> you know, girl, I was just getting ready to say, just like you, you know, it, 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 it probably looks good to anybody, but like if you've had any any sort of um, dance classes, especially if you take you take a tap as a little kid or whatever, it, even though mm -hmm. it was just a little kid, it you know that you know what you're looking at, and then me yes. with the added part, not only did I take dance, but I also played played instruments, right? So mm -hmm. this is the first time that I actually, uh, actually, this is the first time that I paid more attention to the instruments than I did the um, the dance sequence. And what what I'm understanding now that I'm you know looking at it with mature eyes and paying because you know I've been watching them dance for so long that you just kind of you pay attention to them that I kind of tune the music out, but. If they didn't right. practice this, this is their first time doing this sequence, then you, these musicians are also excellent because they're having to time the music with yes. them. So everybody is on point because you, like when you're doing a dance routine, like if any of you guys were like in a band or whatever during um, college or high school, you know, like if you're in a majorette, if you're a flag girl, the dances have to be timed to the beat, the rhythm, everything Absolutely. makes sense. Everything has to be, you know, coordinated. So hearing that they're literally stretching the note and, and timing the bass with, you know, with them landing, this was an excellent production by all of them, to be honest. Absolutely. Like, this, is, this is insane. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it blows me away every time. Every time, it's like the first time. And Nick Castle, our dance director, said, cut. That's it. You cannot get it any better. And I said, oh, happy day. And let me tell you this. You know, but the, I don't like go back too far. Just no, no, wait. Let me tell you this. Tell him what you say. Let me get a chance to talk. <laughs> yeah. How much chance do you want? <laughs> well, you just shut up. <laughs> I loved all of them because I could see the progress of each one. See, because we would always try to make the next film better than the last one. Yeah, I told him that already. You, you, oh, you did? Yeah. After their success in stormy weather, the brothers dreamed the more important film roles, while Harold also aspired to a solo singing career. But in March of 1943, the team faced separation for the first time. A continent away, World War II raged on, and Fayard was drafted, becoming Private Nicholas. Stationed in Mississippi, the elegant dancer soon found himself assigned to a laundry detail in an all-black unit. Back in Los Angeles, Harold turned his energies to his two passions, golf and women. He was rarely home and spent little time with his pregnant wife. On September 1st, a pain-stricken Dorothy tried to convince Harold that their baby was on the way. But he casually dropped her off at the home of Jerry Nicholas, taking the car and leaving them stranded. 
All right, here we go. I knew we'd get there. <laughs> um, so one thing that I didn't say earlier was that when uh, we got to hear the the pain that they had to suffer for not being able to eat in the commissary at the uh, at the studio, um, and they had to get in their cars and drive home in shame. In shame, um, their cars were definitely luxury vehicles. You know, um, not to say that you know no one thinks that racism is good or anything like that. But again, these guys are not victims. They never have been. They grew up better than a lot of us could ever dream. To as far as you know amenities and uh, educational opportunities. And, you know, like these guys had opportunities coming out of the Oasi, right? Um, and so this is probably Bayard's first time like having any kind of like actual struggle, you know, going, uh, being drafted, I would imagine. Um, so anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, um, no, okay. I thought that you were, okay. So yeah. yeah. And then we got, huh? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, and then we got uh, Harold being a straight up Dusty at home, the you know guy who wanted to be the big man and who I'm sure as part of his uh, big man status, landing Dorothy Dandridge, one of the most desired women of the time, had to have been huge for any man. And especially, you know, a guy who appeared to be four foot eight, even though he can tap dance well. But what does he do? It's women, it's golf. I'm going to leave this beautiful woman who all the men in the world want. I've got her. I'm going to leave her stranded while she's, you know, having our child. Any thoughts on that, Grown Woman Vibes? Yeah, it's incredible, though, because as much money as they had, I promise you, this is some Section 8 ass shit. Yeah. This is some, like, it, that is some project poverty level dust, you know? Right. Yeah, it, it's it's absolutely disgusting, but um, let's go on. Harold had pulled a little, what he called funny, and he left the keys and we thought we had the car. But we did find a man going to work and got her in, but she kept holding back. She said, Harold is going to come, he's going to come. But after more than 15 hours, Okay, hold on. Did you hear that? So the lady who was just talking is Geraldine. She's the uh, ex-wife or former wife of um, Fayard, the older brother. Right. So she just said that Harold pulled what he called a funny and left the keys so we thought that we had the car. Did y'all hear wow. that? So wow. it sounds like there must have been a spare set of keys, I guess. Or because uh, he left the keys, so we thought that we had the car. So that sounds like he he like just put a spare set of keys there, and then like still just took off in the car. That's insane. She That's said what he, it sounds he, he like to me. Pulling a funny, he pulled a funny on the day that his wife is supposed to go into labor. Wow. And see, I've researched that, and I've never heard that. Me neither. I've never, heard I've never that read that part, but that is what she said. I knew that that he left her at Geraldine's. I knew that he was, you know, that he left her at the sister-in-law's house, and that they ended up having to use a neighbor's car to get to the uh, hospital. But I didn't think that it was because they thought that they had a car and like, oh, we're scrambling at the last minute now trying to get her to the hospital. So that, that part was new to me, y'all. He pulled a funny, she said. Pulled a funny. Which means he was I'm probably just... doing doing stuff like that all the time. Right. Yeah, because she, she doesn't even sound, you know, upset mm -hmm. by it. Like, I'm sure, like, yeah, it's been several years. However, when you know the situation and, and you know, what happens later, like, that can never be funny. That can never be something right. to just kind of gloss over. So it does make it seem like this is just who he was. That is interesting to me. Hours of labor, Harold was still missing. 
And on September 2nd at 2.42 a.m., Harold and Suzanne Nicholas was finally born. Dorothy was overjoyed, and her child's presence made Harold's absences easier to take. In April 1944, a relieved Fayard was discharged from the Army, and the following year, he became the father of a son, Tony. But All right, so they both got kids now. Um, and just so that you know, both um, Nyla and I have created videos about Dorothy Dandridge and her husband's. Nyla, did you do yours in one video, or are there two? Um, there are two. There's one about, uh, well, no, we did, I think I combined them in one video. That's yeah, I ended up combining them. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are two on my channel. So this, uh, you know, obviously today we're talking about the Nicholas uh, brothers, but um, interesting that the narrator does mention that Harold's absences were not uh, as painful because she had her child. And Nyla goes into depth about, um, a great depth in my opinion, about how uh, horrible, honestly horrible, Dorothy Dandridge's life must have been. And so this little girl was a ray of sunlight, you know, to her. And then, you know, we've got this father who doesn't even care about his wife, you know. And men do, I, I'm sorry, uh, it, might, it might sound shallow, but men do value beauty. And so it's just um, crazy to me that he had one of this, you know, the most admired women of the time. And then they have this little daughter together and it just doesn't matter to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I will drop Nyla's uh, link a little bit later, but yeah. Uh, so you can go and check out that video and all the videos on her channel. Okay. Because they're all excellent. Okay. Thank <laughs> so let's you. go. Thank you. Yes. Yes. But like Harold, the proud father soon became an absentee parent. I tried to be a good husband and a good father. Something happened. I don't know what. But what? like she said, I'm not, well, a lot of show people are not the real family type. All right. Did you have some wow. commentary? Yeah. yeah, he says something happened. I don't know what. Yeah. I, I, mean, what? I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna clip that for uh for dusty uh <laughs> for a, a dusty soundbite because like and the way he looked, it was comical. He's in the eyes bucked. I'm gonna clip that whole thing and make a gif out of it. Something happened. I don't know what. <laughs> like, what? what do you mean you don't know what you know exactly what? And if not, we can definitely talk to your wife. I'm sure she'll be willing to tell. But right. um just I just these men. Girl. <laughs> He doesn't but know I what. Say, no, go mm -hmm. ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, but you know, like I said, the devil does always lie. Apparently, because it th there is a correlation between people that are in Hollywood and celebrities and them being good or bad parents. I don't think that any of them are considered really good parents at all. I'm going to say that I can see what he's saying, right? However. We haven't heard the part in all of this about his own parents neglecting him. They were in show business. They got him into show business. Mm -hmm. So he had some kind of example. Now, we don't know if his father was a dusty to their mom, but it does seem like they stayed together. Um, and they made sure that the boys had everything so that they could, you know, start getting on and performing as well, you know, like they were pretty much like, you know, parent jurors, you know, managing mm -hmm. their careers. We never hear that his father left, that their father left. So what's the deal? You know, their parents were entertainers in, in Harlem. Their parents were entertainers at all those nightclubs, starting out doing just what they did. You know, so it's like, I hear that, but if there were a way to be successful at being a parent in entertainment, he's seen the blueprint. But again, like said, you don't know what happened. I don't know. Yeah, what especially like, you know, being privileged during that time. Um, but I think that, and if you guys haven't caught it, make sure you catch the first part of this because it really, I think kind of showed what might've went into the shaping of them um, during their childhood, like having access to too much 
um not just you know not the the wealth part but just being in proximity oh, to too many women adult women um a lot of sexual overtures and stuff like that to the point where i believe that in a developing um child when they've got too much access to sexuality and stuff like that it kind of activates something and it literally makes them hyper focused on that for some reason right. and that part's activated uh sooner than what it should have been and i would definitely probably lay that on the hands of his father because um men typically are the ones that don't really care you know those are boys being boys you know and mm -hmm. you know kind of guide them into that way you know right right and uh while i'm thinking about it shout out to the blue heart gang i know that they are gang, gang. wherever <laughs> nyla goes uh they are in here they're always strong uh saint titus seems th to to understand what happened you know they are said i don't know what happened saint titus says white women happen white women happen <laughs> uh i don't know what happened uh because shoot John, if, if only it were that simple right but uh no these guys sick here we go by the age of two, Tony had begun to speak, but Harold and Dorothy's daughter, age four, could not. To their horror, the couple realized that something was seriously wrong with their child. Finally, a doctor confirmed their worst nightmare. Harold had irreparable brain damage. Because Daddy had held back, Lynn was denied oxygen. And that was a contributing factor. Harlan was such a beautiful little girl. Yeah. I always I felt always so bad so about that. that. I don't know how don't my, know brother my brother feels about, feels about it. it. He never talks he about, talks it, about much. it much. I, I know inside, I know he's, inside. He's, he's sad. He's it's sad about time. it. I, I, hmm. It was echoing this time. Was it? Uh -oh. Yes, echoing. Yes, echoing. Let me put my okay. head Even on. I'm echoing now. I don't hear an echo, but let me... um. Let me put my headphones on. Hold on. That's weird. That's weird. It's okay. Let me see if this helps. Okay. Okay, I'm going to press play. Tell me if it this helps. I didn't want to okay. show it, you know. That's like perfect. a lot of men. It's better. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay, so yeah, Mister, he didn't want to talk about it. Let's see what he had to say. Talks about it much. I, I know inside he he's sad. He's sad about it. I didn't want to show it. You know, it's like a lot of men, even nowadays, they feel pain, but they don't want to show it. In nineteen, <laughs> look at this fucking clown. This and is that's like... the perfect place to stop. Yeah. This is how he should be remembered forever and ever for how he did his uh, wife and daughter. So again, let's talk about his, this derelict description of being the big man is that he has. Cause being the big man would have been like, uh, well, shoot, this hurts me probably hurts my wife too, who carried this little girl, you know, for nine months. Uh, maybe I should stick around and I don't know, do something for them. Right. Less That's some big man energy. Something. Exactly. But in happening. his mind, yes, <laughs> I, I don't know what. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I was an entertainer, you know. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <Some happen>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely be sure to go back and grab that. I'm looking forward to seeing that inserted into your videos. <laughs> Can't forget that I don't know what, because I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that's very important. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> Clown school happened. That's what. Right. Here we go. And he passed with flying colors, jackass. 
48, the brothers made their last film appearance as a team, alongside Gene Kelly in The Pirate. But unlike white dancers such as Kelly or Astaire, their race still relegated them to brief supporting roles. Just Who cares? Like, they were still wealthy beyond <laughs> a lot of people's wildest dreams. And did race stop them from taking care of their own freaking children? I'm so tired of hearing about race and what race is stopping these men from doing who have like extreme wealth, you know? <laughs> but like, did, did being black make them like just be bad dads? But oh, wait, never mind. That's a stupid question because <laughs> I don't know what happened. My bad. I digress. Let me move on. Stay on top. Fayard and Harold would have to look beyond America and sidestep new obstacles in the decade to come. By 1948, the Nicholas Brothers' career had cooled in Hollywood, but audiences still embraced the dazzling duo, especially when they traveled abroad. Well, we had just great times <laughs> in Europe. Uh, never thinking about prejudice or anything like that. Okay, I'm glad he said that, right? Because this narrator, I don't know what in the, like, white, liberal, um, what, what, what is that? Guilt. This is white, white liberal guilt, white, the narration, yeah. the tone of the narration. And, and all oh, these poor black guys, uh, they, they couldn't make, they couldn't make it here in America. And uh, I loved it in Europe. Oh boy, it was so white women everywhere. That's what he's thinking. I mean, that, that's, what, right. that's where this is going, right? Because right. I don't know what happened. Yeah, Something uh, happened. yeah I, I don't know why I, I couldn't make any money uh, in the States anymore. I mean, it didn't matter because I wasn't going to pay for my child any, anyway, but I, I, I don't know what happened. The uh, next thing I knew, I, I was in Europe. I, I don't know what happened. I, I don't, did I get on a plane? <laughs> did I get on a boat? I don't know. I, what I a white woman and I was like, okay, period. Like, <laughs> what? So the narrator, oh, these poor guys, you know, uh, they they loved uh, Hollywood and oh, they, they couldn't even go back to New York City. They they had to leave America to be inter fucking tainers, right? It's not like they, they, you know, like were just, you know, scratching and surviving good times, trying to be line cooks or something. They couldn't be entertainers in America to you know, and have the, the kind of success that they were having as entertainers in America. So, oh man, these poor guys, they they had to go to Europe. Oh man, cut yeah. to, oh man, it was so exciting. I, I was so happy. <laughs> 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 what? I don't know who edited this, but I, I feel like whoever edited this was kind of thinking what I'm thinking. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let, let's keep going. At the, it was all open arms. Europe became the brothers' oh, home. Anything like that? The, it was all open arms. Okay, so can we get off of the racism uh, narrative? We probably can't. We should. I, I yeah, I think that that would be great, but I don't know how this narrator this narrator feels about that. Well, we had just great times in, in Europe. Uh, never thinking about prejudice or anything like that. It was all open arms. Europe became the brothers' home into the early 1950s. In London, they danced for the royal family. In Egypt, their admirers included King Farouk. Harold was especially drawn to Europe's racial climate and its women. Europe for me was a uh, haven. That's a whole lot of white women. Girl, if he don't look like a sissy in boys town, he just is happy. <laughs> hey, country mama. Uh, listen, just staring like, ooh, I can't wait to climb that. Okay. I'm telling you. My gosh, like that's embarrassing. Like Christmas time. For them to like the way that they edited this too. This is embarrassing. Like he just it looks so be. happy. Like, look at this big old white woman. Right. 
<laughs> right. So I, I don't know what happened. I, I was walking down the street and then I just seen a big old white woman. I don't know where she come from. I, I, I don't know what happened. But I sure wasn't happy. I know that. Oh, oh Lord. I was like, here Christmas time. <laughs> I'm going to raise the flag of Europe. <laughs> right. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, just so happy. A like, whole passport, bro. A whole one, not a half of one. Hold up, we gotta go back to that. <laughs> Virgo child said big big. He got him a big old, big old bit. Big old, big old, tall, long legs, long legs. For the royal family. In Egypt, their admirers included King Farouk. Harold was especially drawn to Europe's racial climate and its women. Europe for me was a uh, haven. I tried to learn the language. <laughs> Love to talk to the ladies, you know, because that's where I learned most of my languages from. In 1950, Fayard became the father of another son, Paul. But even when his wife, Jerry, joined him on tour, Fayard was far from faithful. Okay, so let's go and talk about Fayard now. Already, he said mm -hmm. that after the first child, he's a bad father. And he don't know what happened. But something happened. Something happened again because, oops, I did it again. Jerry's pregnant again with another child. He's already not digging the one he has. Yeah. She's and Fayard right married. Yeah, and, and, and he married as close to, you know, the white woman as right. he possibly could <laughs> and a black woman. But I guess when he got to Europe, ain't nothing like, you know, getting the off real of the great thing. value. Yeah, he was getting a great value, white woman. He decided to go ahead and get top shelf. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. <laughs> right. Man, he got him a real white woman. And he's excited about it. Could it be faithful? Mm. He already knew that, though. He already knew that he wasn't yeah. a good father. Let's he have probably, another um, Well, that was to keep her busy so that, you know, something could happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, but you something. Know. Uh, mm, 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 I don't know. I don't be knowing it. And get educated like that. I know how to tap mm -hmm. dance. with tap dance school. <laughs> that education school. Okay. Right. Here we go. It seems as though when I went to Europe, everything went wild. <laughs> He just don't know shit. He don't know what happened ever. He doesn't know what happened about being a good father. He doesn't seem to know how he got her pregnant again. And then everything just went wow. Like, was he doing drugs or something? Like, why doesn't he seem to have a memory I'm of anything that happened out. in his adult life? Well, there's some vintage mess going on. I mean, yeah, it's something going on there with him. I just, I, I was just there. All I know, I, I put my tap dancing <laughs> shoes on. They point the stage, I'll go tap dance. That's all I know. I don't know. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this dude is a whole me. From it Wait a minute. You see him feeding? She, she feeding him. He got him a nice feminine, uh, feminine white woman who is feeding him, okay? Submissive feeding him, okay? Child. Listen. What a so when I went to Europe, everything went wild. <laughs> oh, I know that's what, um, that's definitely what Hayard, uh, uh Hayard, <laughs> they're the same Negro, <laughs> Harold. They are the same what, black man. <laughs> they literally are. Hayard, Hayard. Harold wanted to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was trying to climb up that woman. Just smiling mm -hmm. and skinning and grinning. I, yeah, that's something that, I don't know if y'all say that anywhere. That's a, a thing we say in the South. I've all, I've only yeah, heard. Yeah, skinning and grinning. My grandma used to say skinning that. Skinning and grinning. I don't know. I don't know what skinning is, <laughs> but I, I, don't I know, know what it's skinning really, is either. It's only coupled with grinning. I, I've never heard of anyone to just be skinning. Skinning is definitely um, with mischief because I I just remember it more frequently when like um, when I would go visit like my grandparents in the south and stuff like that, and like the boys would come over, they wanting yeah. to see us and all this kind of stuff. And what is oh, that yeah. boy doing on my porch, skinning and grinning? 
<laughs> with his managed self. What's he managed? His managed self. Mm -hmm. Yep, managed. That's another managed. thing I only mm -hmm. hear down here. Uh, yeah, skinning and grinning. Okay, yeah. So My if, if y'all are familiar with uh, instances of skinning, solely skinning, not skinning, skinning, let me know. Email me. Here we go to this lost Negro. He just never knows what's going on. <laughs> All these beautiful girls from Italy, from France, from England, from Sweden, from Switzerland. I, I went wild. And my wife heard about it. <laughs> the <best. laughs> I went wild. My <laughs> wife heard about it. I went wild. All these beautiful women from Italy, from France, all these white women. Say it. Mm -hmm. Because are y'all going to tell me that being at um, the Cotton Club, that they did not have access to what a lot of Black men would consider the most beautiful women, a lot of preferences as the um, the code for the... Um, for the chorus line girls was tall, tan, and was it was it tall, tan, and something else? But it was light skinned, tall women who were either black or biracial. And mm -hmm. all of, I mean, I've seen the pictures of the women, those chorus line dancers, beautiful faces, beautiful bodies. So if say that you wanted a white woman without saying that you wanted a white woman, his own wife, a preference. Uh, we know that Dorothy Dandridge was a preference, but Jerry, uh, Jerry, um, Fayard's wife, and Dorothy, Harold's wife, they got two exotic preferences as wives. Yeah. But they're talking about all of the beautiful Italian women, the beautiful French women, the beautiful German women, the beautiful English women. Just say you wanted a white woman. Because yeah. as far as black women were concerned, you had your uh, pick of, you know, the top of the line girls being, um, having access to those chorus line dancers at the Cotton Club. Mm -hmm. So when light skin is not white enough, when biracial is not white enough, you need the real thing. Like, just, just say what it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I'm sure that look and you know I I've, I've traveled to Europe I love Europe and I've seen beautiful European women um, do I think that they in anywhere in Europe had access to women who were more beautiful or you know maybe you know maybe even as beautiful as do I think that they couldn't find beautiful women in Harlem or even in Los Angeles if that's really just all that they wanted was beautiful women no okay. right. But <clears throat> let's let's see what happens because you know it's amazing that he's e even able to tell this much because he never really just seems to know what happened, you know. <laughs> but he knows that his wife found out and got back to his wife that he was messing around with all these beautiful women from all these European countries. Let's see. Bellboy came to the room and he said, "Mr. Nicholas, the young lady that you brought along on the tour." wants to know, is she going to stay in this hotel or the one across the way? And I had to translate for him. <laughs> so he took his shoe and threw, you dumb sucker. Okay, so that's how she found out. She probably had her suspicions, but that's how she found out that he was cheating on her because he was too stupid to speak the language so his wife, who he brought to come on tour with him, had to translate for him that the hotel employee is asking, hey, this girl who you brought with you, she wants to know if she is going to stay here at your hotel or are you getting another room for her? So as the employee is saying this to <clears throat> Bayard, Bayard's like, uh-huh, hold up, let me go get my wife. So the employee then says to her, um, this guy brought a girl and the girl wants to know if she's going to be able to stay here at his hotel or if he's going to get her another hotel somewhere else. So she tells her husband that her husband in turn gets angry at the guy who came to bring the message to the hotel employee and throws his shit. Wow. 
How pathetic. Right. So not only are you a bad dad, a cheating husband, you've been in Europe for some time at this point, long enough to meet a chick, but you can't talk to her. Hey, Miss Chocolate Divine. So what language are they speaking beyond sex? If he can't exactly. even- Exactly. If he doesn't even know that much. Hey, Scar Beauty, yeah. He doesn't even know that much. What could they have been talking about? If he could not even speak the language and like, he probably was just a trick to her, but like, it, it just, uh, I just can't. Right. Right. Uh, I, I don't get any of this, but yeah, I'm sure that he doesn't either. <laughs> he just happened. I don't know how she got up to the room. They better be glad. <laughs> they better be glad there was no Instagram and shade room and social media back then because they would have been getting their asses eaten up. Girl, I wonder if it would have mattered. You know what I mean? Like, gosh, these guys. It, it's, yeah, you this, can't, you can't shame a Dusty, okay? You cannot shame right. them. Okay? <laughs> right. The neighbors always go Nate. Period. <sighs> Here we go. Although Jerry could stand up to her rivals, Dorothy was deeply wounded by Harold's infidelities. Their marriage was at an impasse, and in 1951, the couple divorced. Eight-year-old Lynn was placed with a caretaker as Harold withdrew into work. It ended rather bitterly. It was terrible to watch. In January of 1953, the brothers returned to America to perform at the inauguration of Dwight D. Eisenhower. But although they counted presidents and kings among their fans, they soon faced bitter discrimination again when they joined Frank Sinatra to headline at the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas. We don't care about the discrimination these clowns have faced. Again, here we go. Victims. Victims. You just basically told us they were living it up, putting their pins in whatever they could put in that was European. And now, oh no, the bitter discrimination that they face. <laughs> I need to see if this was um, created by NPR. <laughs> this is like, this is, this, this is so, this, this is white liberal guilt and I, I can't, it really is. Hey, Coruscant. Thank Hi, you for Sal. coming. In case you're wondering why we are called the time, it is because of this lady here. She gave us the name the time. I yep. love, you know, fans of this channel. She is she is Blue Heart Gang. Uh, but she's also time as seen by her magnifying glasses. So drop some blue hearts and drop some magnifying glasses if you are enjoying this stream. Drop some thumbs up also if you are enjoying this stream. I don't know what our count is because I don't look at that. I don't monitor that. But let me look. I'm showing. Is this right? I'm showing 36. Is that correct? I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm seeing 36. But I think there should be at least 100. It's more than 100 people here. So would you please drop me a like? Because that helps me out a lot. It's a quick free way to help your girl out. I surely would appreciate it. Let us continue. This is just... Mm, mm, mm. Between shows, I walked into the lobby. I was sitting there. All of a sudden, one of the guys of the hotel came over to me. He says, you're not supposed to be sitting here. You should be back in your dressing room. I said, I'm just here minding my own business. I'll go to my dressing room when I feel like it. Harold had quite a to-do with one of the very big entertainers who attempted to rub his head for good luck. And it was something that came out of slavery. And he would say, you're white, but I'm talented. Don't ever dare treat me less than a man. So this man says, well, we're going to make Sammy Davis a star, and you're not going to work anymore. He says, fine, there's the world. I can work in the world. Well, 
Well, what do you say about that? And I 100% believe that Sammy Davis Jr. said, you can rub my head or whatever else you want. I was getting ready to say, Sammy probably was like, you know, you can, you know, go ahead and rub me all the way down, honey. Um, We already know how Sammy led me. I'm going to let you rub me down. (laughs) You know. Exactly. Exactly. Well, at least he grew up here in that moment, I guess. In that moment. You know, in mm-hmm. that moment, fine, whatever, um, whatever. He doesn't get any like extra brownie points. I'm surprised that he knows what happened. You know, <laughs> and right. a, a hand, a white hand was on my head, and a, and, and my palm eight was coming out. I, I, I don't know what happened, <laughs> but I say, right. you, you better talk to Sammy Davis Jr. about that. <laughs> like, Mm-mm. what? Shut up. Like, yeah. Right. You see Coruscant. Y'all, y'all black Coruscant. She said, he said, rub him the right way. (laughs) Rub me the right way. (laughs) Y'all, I'm sorry. I can't chat because I'm using my phone and on StreamYards, it won't let you chat yet from the um, thing. And you can't have multiple windows when you um, use your phone. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, uh, Bombshell. I don't, I don't like his voice either. Bombshell, he's got very nice legs. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I, I, don't I, I don't know. Hey, <laughs> hey Miss Kim. I don't know if I said hi to you earlier. You know, she is my fellow. We both lost our dogs rather recently, and I do still pay for you. Oh, I, I sorry, Kim. Comments uh, lately, but. Anyone who lost a dog, you know, I think I kind of need to put some kind of support group together or something for us because people don't be getting it, how serious it is for us. Nyla gets it, and yeah. I really do appreciate that. And I, yeah, I don't expect for everyone to get it. It's not even a criticism, but, like, uh, yeah, that's something that I'm definitely working through, and it is it is tough. It is tough. But yeah. I see your name. I do think about that because uh, – that is something that we share, an unfortunate thing that we share, but it's what you sign up for when you sign be a, a you know, a dog mom, you know. Mm-hmm. Typically, uh, we outlive them, you know, in the natural order of things, we outlive them if we get them when we're younger, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, let's, let's bring the mood back. Here we go. Harold stood by his words, launching a solo career in France. During his stay, he married seamstress Eliane Patron in a short-lived union that produced a son, Melly. Woo! I didn't see any pictures of him like that with Harlan. I was going to say, I don't know if I've seen any pictures of him and Harlan together. I've in seen a short-lived one union. with him and Dorothy and Harlan. Yeah, uh, I've seen that is- one. Yeah, but not just the two of them. Mm-mm. Woo, that's a happy looking man. Yeah, it is. That is one happy looking brother. Hmm. I thought wow. that, you know, children just wasn't his thing. Mm-hmm. I wonder what her label and delivery story was. Yeah, I wonder if he what pulled a funny and left her someplace while he went to go and play golf while she was in the throes of uh, delivering a child. Y'all, mm-hmm. a, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm-hmm. This man is happy. This man is happy to have that white reflection looking back at him and he knows that it is a part of himself. Harlan didn't get a a fifth of that from her father. Nope. This is disgusting to me. And it would be, and and, and let, let me just be clear, it's not even the white part that's disgusting. If it had right. been another black woman, just the fact that you created a child with a woman, and okay, let's say that the whole world gave you a pass, you were just stupid and, and you didn't know how to be a good father, you didn't know how to care, but 
then you're just going to have some other woman's child. She's whatever, younger. She's she's prettier. She's whatever. Er, she's the next thing. But but you know how to. You, you can at least look the child in the face and smile. You can acknowledge that the child exists. Like, what the fucking hell? What? This is so terrible. Yeah. This is absolutely disgusting to me to see this photo. <sighs> absolutely disgusting. Hey, Flora Bella. You're not late. We don't take attendance. We're just glad that you made it. But you might want to see it from the beginning. And is it um, Shateka, Shateka Woods? Yeah, none of that happiness with his daughter. He is a loser. He is, like, what the fuck? You know? Oh, gosh. But yes, uh, Biz Minot, you're right. They are, they are like our children, our babies, our, our four-legged babies. That produced the son, Melly. Meanwhile, Jerry Nicholas had had enough of Fayard's philandering. They divorced in 1956, but remained close friends. The 60s would be an era of explosive unrest in America. Across the nation, blacks marched for civil rights, and U.S. soldiers were being called to fight in the distant jungles of Vietnam. In 1965, Harold joined his brother and Bob Hope, to entertain American troops in Vietnam, only 50 miles from enemy fire. Only 50 miles from enemy fire. Is that supposed to make us feel like he was brave or something? I was getting ready to say because it was not giving that at all. That Negro was there singing and tap dancing just like he did in, in the United States and Europe. All right. Just fifty miles from in. I mean, but like, okay, does does he have on uh, some? <laughs> well, you know, Ty, the narrator's trying he's to be carrying a gun. Like, why? Why? <laughs> he's, he's trying to give him a bone. You know, the narrator has done a good job of being a, you know, of underhandedly like kind of throwing him under the bus. So he's trying to throw him a bone. <laughs> Too much of a bone. That this narrator's been excellent at, at throwing bones like this whole mm -hmm. thing is, it's annoying at this point oh man yeah like there is, is it me or like are you is it it's sounding like the narrator is trying to make it seem like they're bra as brave as the soldiers you know like oh man they whew, they toughed it out and went to sing some fucking songs and then tap dance a little. <laughs> thank you for your service you know what this is giving actually that What's stupid that? guy who called in when we were talking about flip wilson and and oh, what a yeah. war zone the comedy field is you know yeah and, and he he had to put on that dress uh, because he it, it's it's a battle zone when you go out there mm -hmm. and, and if that white man say put on that dress and go tell them jokes you know he gotta, he gotta go and, and get out there in the war and go tell him jokes. <laughs> that, that's what this is giving. Only with better grammar. <laughs> right. This is absolutely awful. Okay, here we go. Let's hear about their bravery at war, y'all. <laughs> Let's hear about their bravery in Vietnam. <laughs> right. Once back in the states, tragedy hit close to home. On September 8, 1965, the brothers received the shattering news that Harold's ex-wife, Dorothy Dandridge, had been found dead of an apparent drug overdose. Harold suffered the loss with typical stoicism. I've never had a chance to talk to her, to tell her that I was sorry, and she died. I was really well after that. You never got the chance or you never took the chance? Right. He had years. She remarried it. Like, what do you mean you didn't? You never got the chance. Like, so now it's the right. Lord too. Like, just faith, mm -hmm. the Lord, destiny is 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 not on your side either. He never got the chance to. Negro. Mm -hmm. Like you, you had several chances. You had a chance to uh, pay for her care. So that Dorothy, you know, didn't have to go bankrupt and, and take her out of the care that she was receiving. 
the only bill that like she made sure that no matter what kind of money she had or did not have, she would pay for her daughter's care. So like that's how you know things got desperate when the little girl couldn't stay at the facility where she had her and go into state care. That was an opportunity then, you sorry bitch, to do something, to say something. I'm sure that she would have received that as an olive branch. We're not talking, but at least he's taking care of Harlan. At least I don't have to worry about her. I'll figure out what I've got to do on my own, but at least he's doing that. That was an opportunity that was given to him. I mean, it's not like, you know, her falling apart wasn't very public. So when he saw what happened with her second husband and that her second husband had milked her for a lot of money and he was still working, tap dancing all over the globe just to shoot her a little cash to, hey, I'm sure that you don't have it for heroin, but... I, I should have been there, but here, let, let's just be sure that Harlan's okay for a couple of years. There is an opportunity. I'm sure she would have been happy about that. Yep. That would have been saying sorry enough. But he just didn't get the chance and he faced it with the same stoicism. That, that's not stoicism. That's I don't give a fuck it -ness. Right. That's not stoicism. He faced it with the same stoicism that he faced. No, so he was being stoic when he left Dorothy to have the child uh, without a fucking car to get her to the hospital because he had to go and play golf. Was that being stoic? Not communicating with her after they get the, the child home and the child seems to be Dorothy's only friend, even though she can't communicate with her mouth, mm -hmm. you know, talk. So was that him being stoic as well? Something happened. Is that what that was? <laughs> I don't know what, yeah, where, where's, where's Fay Art to explain this? He, he knows. Right. I don't he know what. Knows. Something happened. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Fay Art. Yeah, that needs <laughs> to be a sound bite that needs to be stored in my mm -hmm. in my stream yard actually <laughs> exactly <laughs> you sorry sons of bitches like that's so <laughs> terrible that is so freaking terrible <sighs> Let, let's continue we got just a few minutes left but two years later there was cause once again to sell I'm not sure if you guys can hear me, but I guess um, the power may have uh, glitched again on Ty. She should be back momentarily. I'm not sure if you guys hear me. Yeah, okay. She said she'll be right back. I'm not sure if I need to go out and come back in. Okay, you guys can hear. Yeah, I'm so sorry that that's happening. But, um, okay. Yeah, this story, is it really is tragic, though, when you think about, um, he knew Dorothy's life as well. He knew her plight. He knew um, what she'd gone through. You know, Dorothy's mom was aloof to her abuse. Um, she told her, you know, from what I understand, you know, she allowed her daughters both to be abused by a woman then you know they go through adversity being in the type of uh industry that they're in during the time that they're in they face all kinds of discrimination dorothy was denied being educated because her mom wanted them to be performers and harold was the first man that dorothy had been with sexually 
Um, she was, you know, she'd been with no other man. And that was the experience that he gave her. And to just know that she lived her whole life like that, this tragic. Thank you. Uh, uh, give me just no a problem. second. Um, uh, Indy bothered me in my moment of <laughs> uh, freaking out. And so I have to give her a treat before I get yeah. back Yeah, no problem. But thank you for keeping the story going. No problem. That. And yeah, y'all, for sure, if you have not already seen uh, Nyla's videos, or Nyla's video, I have two, she has one. Check them out, like seriously, uh, you won't be disappointed. Okay. In the, here, go get in your bed. Yeah. Okay, sorry, y'all. Okay, uh, I'll be ready. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> How's she gonna say I stay with the mess? I'm just giving a little history lesson, okay? It's all good. It's just history. It's just history. <laughs> it's Sarge. Look, Sarge is on that BS. Here we go. That I was sorry. And she died. I was ready to go after that. But two years later, there was cause once again to celebrate in the Nicholas family when Fayard married a lovely, sophisticated model named Barbara January. She was good for me in so many ways. I've been lucky with, with my wives. <laughs> and they're all beautiful and they take good care of me. <laughs> there you go again. Uh, he, he, hell. <laughs> I've been, I been really lucky with, with my wife, you know. Mm -hmm. They're all beautiful and they take good care of me. And I don't take good care of them. And I'm ugly as hell, but I don't know what happened. I just, I don't, right. I don't even know. Just so so good. God be so right. good to me. <laughs> what? And she is beautiful. So is Geraldine. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But, you know. Jeez, <laughs> yeah, all that grinning, you know, and skinning. He's definitely and skinning. skinning and grinning, skinning mm -hmm. and grinning ass bitch. <laughs> like I'm tired of these guys. Mm -hmm. I'm really tired of these guys. Here, Andy, go get in your bed. She, she knows that I'm vulnerable. Okay, let let's go. Yeah, so y'all yeah, blessed with a beautiful woman again. But as the dancers entered their fifties, their careers began to move to a slower tempo. Now, child. <laughs> Who the hell told Fayard to wear those glasses, Jesus? <laughs> this is where, so like, see, they could hide the dust in the black and white film and the tuxedos, tap dancing, so smoothly, but like this photo, it just screamed dust. It's given it Rollo like you... and Mac Daddy or something. It just <laughs> like. Dude, oh, Daddy. you don't have a mirror or a friend. Child just smiling because they know they mm -hmm. look good. Skinning and grinning. Skinning and grinning. And look at them big old teeth. Those teeth. On Harold. My God. Mm hmm. Good God. Have mercy. Look at this. Like, y'all, th this is just. If I didn't even know who these guys were, and, and I just saw like knew nothing about their lives, like mm, th there's definitely some dust behind those eyes. There's some dust behind those uh, shades, lenses. There's some dust behind those big old teeth. Th th this is just like yeah, they can't hide anymore. <laughs> Diamond Pearl Gems just look like a full uh, Color Forty Five commercial. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because he is kind of like giving a little Billy D. Williams with the mustache and the forehead so, and the hair pushed back. You think Billy D. Williams is somewhere around the corner? <laughs> you think he's somewhere around the corner? Uh uh. <laughs> Girl, he, it, I mean, it looks like he's ready to pop out at any time. I, that's someone I actually met too. And I met him in an airport. Um, Billy D. Williams? Like, yeah, but this was a girl. This was, this had to be like, 35 years ago probably and maybe maybe closer to 40 years ago but 
he was in an airport with his um with his uh with his wife and you know she was asian and he had some you know some some blazing children and i was really young but uh look those i knew right then and there that everything didn't mix right mm. that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> That there, that was not a good mix. <laughs> That's funny to me. Um, yeah, y'all. Th this this photo says a lot. This says a lot. <laughs> oh, look. It, so, you know. Oh, that's because I'm 28. Um, yeah. Th there you go. Why is that the magic age everybody likes to lie about? It's somewhere between 27 and 29. That That's where we all stay. Yeah. That is crazy I have a friend me. that calls me every year on my birthday because we promised that I wouldn't go past 28. And okay. on my 28th birthday, they call me to wish me a happy uh, 28th anniversary, anniversary of my 28th birthday. So... <laughs> <laughs> But now that, like, literally my son turned 31 um, two days ago, three days ago, I might have to boost my age up. <laughs> He's going to have to boost his down, okay? You know what? If he loves that's, you. That's the strategy. That's the strategy. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> or just say he's a liar. Yeah, you know, I love my son, but he is a, a He's 12. liar. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> just a big 12, but you know, big mature 12. for his age. <laughs> got married at 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about that. But uh, <laughs> what are you, a mathematician? Just go with it. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Right. Here we go. Let's get back to this uh, dust so we can get off here and go eat dinner. In 1970, <laughs> Fayard gave a dramatic performance as a man falsely accused of murder in the movie, The Liberation of L.B. Jones, opposite Lola Falana. Everybody loved what I did in that film. And I thought, wow, I'm going to get some other roles. But they never did call me. In the 1974 film, Uptown Saturday Night, Harold played a Harlem gangster opposite Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier. Oh, the dust. Lord, have mercy. Uh yeah. This combination right here, y'all. Mm -hmm. This one, two, punch. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine what was going on on that set? Can mm -hmm. you imagine what was happening on that set? I'm trying to mm -hmm. tell you. Uh, y'all, somebody give him a welcome. Y'all just give him a proper welcome, whoever the fuck he is. Let him know what Aww. time it is over here. Let him know. Your, Let him know. Right. Let yeah, him know what I time it is. I have one question for him. Like, does your coochie hurt, sir? It is does. That what's wrong? It does. And after this live stream, I will drop a butt hurt form that you can fill out so that you can let us know how and why your ass is hurt by what you are seeing here today. And then we will forward it to, um, well, actually I do, I do have someone working for the channel now. We'll forward it to her and then she can decide exactly which trash folder it's going to go into. Okay. Mm -hmm. But thank you for tuning in. Hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Either way, it helps the channel. Thank you so much. Here we go. Amen. Amen. Now. Back to hating these Negroes, like he's not. <laughs> no, but these, no, th this is not it. This is not it. But again, what seemed to be a new beginning became a frustrating one-shot appearance. What can I tell you? I mean, I, am, I, I don't know, really. I wonder sometimes, I wonder, not sometimes, most of the times I wonder what happened, why, why, you know, what did I do wrong? What? He wonders what he did wrong. Do y'all hear this? This man who basically lived a charmed life well wow. into his 50s now wants to know why he can't get an acting gig. What did I do wrong, Lord? What did wow. I do? Insert 
Bay Yard. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I guess. But <laughs> let's start with the fact that you cheated on your wife from the mm-hmm. moment that you married her. Okay, let's start there. Let's start by the fact that um, your daughter um, was born, no thanks to you, okay, and the little tricky trick that you played by leaving the keys and not really leaving a car there, you know, so that your wife could get to the hospital whilst you went to enjoy some holes of golf, okay? Uh, we could we could do that. And then, okay, after she was born, you continue to cheat on your wife, right? Um, maybe those are just, I mean, those are just some of the things that I can think of, you know, that he did wrong, you know. And then don't, don't even get the fashion police pulled into this because they can tell a lot of things that you did wrong. But he wants to know why he can't get a good acting gig. Like, oh, this must be the Lord punishing me for something that I did. What could it be? The child. <sighs> heroin, Fairland, heroin. <laughs> What did I do wrong? I have just, I've been tap dancing and, and loving women. And philandering well, and worshiping well, white you know, women. And... No, 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 now you don't have to talk about all that. Now you sound like one of those, those black men hating women who that Dusty was just talking about. Don't, don't be talking like that. Don't be mm-hmm. talking like that. Cause that's not what this is. It's not the kind of party that this is. Jeez. He's just a guy trying to live his life, you know? What did I do wrong? Shit. Did I do wrong? By now, musicals had disappeared from movie screens. And many young African-Americans saw the Nicholas Brothers as old-fashioned stereotypes from an earlier unenlightened Hollywood. It appeared that after 45 years of stardom and struggle, the brothers were facing their life. Stardom and struggle. Speaking of struggle, what in the hell is going on with Bayard's hair right here? What is that haircut called? Um, I think Bayard was, was trying to look like he was a man of no color. Jeez, I was hoping that was for a movie role. I don't know what, what is happening here. It's the yeah. hairline is uneven. The top is looking sparse in the center, but and then it dips in. What is happening here? Dips and cow licks and foreheads and um, yeah. Oof. Yeah. Is is that is that a relaxer of some sort? Because it does it, it doesn't it, look relaxed. You know, it looks it's, tense. It's. it's it, it could be uh it could be an ultra firm carefree curl Ooh. or something you know all i, I know is I, I, like, it cares I, if, it, it, if it's a carefree pictures. curl it's it's caring it, it's not it's, it's not it's an not, unbothered curl at all no it's, a it's very, not in any kind a, of unrelaxed state yeah it's a it's a bothered curl mm-hmm. but mm. but what about what about harold's dentures like, uh, yeah, just, still like, they're denturing. <laughs> yeah, they are definitely denturing. Yeah, yeah, they are large and in charge. They, they, they're the dentures are the big man that he wanted to be, that he was talking about. This is so terrible. No juices and berries. Yeah, yeah, that this is bad. This is bad. Bad stuff. <laughs> Those are some big ass dangers. They are huge. Like, why are mm-hmm. you? They are huge. <laughs> like, what are you getting ready to chew? This is awful. Okay, here we go. Last dance in the limelight. But appearances can be deceiving. After fading from the spotlight in the 1970s,
Okay, so I thought I was off mute, <laughs> but I wasn't. Uh, Ty should be back in a few seconds. Let me see if I look in the StreamYard chat. Did she? Okay, yeah, she said give her a second. Um, unfortunately, the screen, the screen with Bayard and Harold's face is gone because I would have loved to just roasted those dentures a few minutes more, as well as the hairstyles and whatever kind of processes that they were having done to, uh, you know, I guess, beautify themselves on some level. Because, you, you know, these were some really funny looking guys. It's really interesting, guys, that Black women are always ridiculed for different hair techniques, relaxers, perms, colors, and all this kind of stuff. When if you travel back in time far enough, you will see that they were finger waving, they were whipping it, flipping it, dyeing it, frying it, laying it to the side, and nobody had anything to say. Nobody said that they self-hated. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> exactly. Power of Chi said, too old to dance on TikTok. Now, that's really bad if it's too too old to dance on TikTok. <laughs> I was laughing at that too. <sighs> Gosh. Um, okay, so did y'all already address uh, uh, the Bozak person who was asking why we're not talking about the white men uh, who did Dorothy wrong? Um, I don't know if you are just... I don't know if you're like, I don't know. Anyway, we've, we've already talked about that. And the stream is not about Dorothy Dandridge. And I do believe that someone did address that. I believe that someone said that. Um, well, and it's okay if you're late, we you're both... late, but there is. Um... No, I was saying we both addressed it. We've both done videos about it. And guess what? If we don't want to talk about it, we don't have to. We're going to talk about these Negroes, though. So right black, we don't have to do an offset of a white man because two black men are dusty no we're not doing that yeah so that, there's no so that's offset not what we're talking about today um and thank you good judy you said that this stream is about the nicholas brothers not dorothy nor is it about dorothy's white husbands who again like we've already said these channels understand nuance these channels understand that there is, you know, that two things can be true at one time, but there is a topic tonight. And so if you are capable of reading, then you saw what we are talking about. You saw, and if, you, if you're not capable of reading, you can look at pictures. You saw who's on the thumbnail. There's no photo of Dorothy Danders. There's no photo of her white husband or anyone else. So the topic is these two dusty ass Negroes. We know how to talk about white men when it's time to talk about white men. So when that's what you want to see, if you don't know how to read, then just take a look at the photo. And when you see a white man on the photo uh, for the thumbnail, then you can come and join us at that point. There will be a time for that. This is not the time. No, now, and you, you guys aren't any... going to be. I'm sorry. Hmm, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 go I'm ahead. Just, no, I just want to say you're not going to bully us into talking about white men either. You're not going to do that, okay? Me personally, I will sit up here and talk about black men from now to 2055 if you keep bothering me, okay? Because I'll never run out of content talking about black men. It is a courtesy that we, uh, not a courtesy, it's just facts, it's just truth, it's just life because we don't have biases. Mm -hmm. That's why we talk about white men, but I don't have to. Okay, I as a black woman, I can talk about right. black men ad nauseum, and so can Ty. So just shut up, because there are channels who will never mention the shortcomings or the abuses of white men. We're not those women, but don't push me, okay? Because it is very advantageous right. to drag black men. Yeah, we know that. We know that. And I mean, look, my best videos, my best performing videos, do drag black men, and I do. You know, drag white men when the time is right. And guess what? Y'all don't watch those videos. Nope. You know? So it just is what it is. Uh, point blank the fuck, period. <laughs> period. Um, and so, but again, for those of you who are already here, if you're new here, whatever, like I said, Nyla has already done a video on Dorothy Dandridge and both of her husbands, one of whom was black, one of whom was white. I've made 
two videos, one on the black one, one on the white one. But we're not talking about Dorothy Dandridge uh, outside of her being the unfortunate bride of Harold Nicholas. We're talking about the Nicholas mm -hmm. brothers tonight and their dust. And I should have warned you all to wear your masks. I apologize. Please put some masks in the chat. Um, what else? Oh, and so a uh, person who's looking for the information about uh, the white man Dorothy was with, uh, you clearly came a little bit late. So just look in my community tab at some point after this live stream, I will drop the butt hurt form into uh, the community tab and you can let us know just how and why uh, your, your butt is hurting from the content that you have heard tonight. And we will forward that to uh, the lady who is working for the channel and she will be sure that it gets to the proper trash file in our email. All right, uh, anything else before we go on? Oh no, we're good. Okay, thank you for keeping it going. Uh, I'm gonna hurry up and finish this because I'm so tired of this. By now, musicals had disappeared from movie screens. And many young African-Americans saw the Nicholas Brothers as old-fashioned stereotypes from an earlier unenlightened Hollywood. It appeared that after 45 years of stardom and struggle, the brothers were facing their last dance in the limelight. But appearances can be deceiving. After fading from the spotlight in the 1970s, the Nicholas Brothers would enjoy a decade of renewal and rediscovery. Okay. Who said something about those dentures? <laughs> <laughs> they are denturing. I'm telling you. Oh my gosh, what a big, bright smile. My, 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 my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he should have got his dentures at the same place that Fayar got his because Fayar's is not nearly as big. Right. They are a little bit more on the realistic side. Thank you. <laughs> is it is it finesse or finesse? But anyway, period. Let me know how to say your name. <laughs> Thank you. Discovery in the 1980s. It was thanks partly to popular dancers like Gregory Hines, who embraced tap as a black American art form. Harold starred on stage in the tap dance kid and won raves when he replaced Gregory Hines in the musical Sophisticated Ladies. This is the kind of thing I wanted to do all along, you know. I wanted to do for myself, but it was great. It was beautiful. Even when he was like 65, Harold was like a freak of nature. Harold was still jumping off staircases into splits. Harold also found happiness with a Swedish jazz promoter named Rigmor Newman. She became his manager and his life companion, a woman sensitive to his pride. <laughs> From the cradle to the grave. <laughs> in the arms of a baby. In the arms of a Becky. Fly away <laughs> from here. In the arms of a Becky. You will find someone to clean your dust. <laughs> this is like, y'all, I just want you to keep in mind, look, hold on. <laughs> and, and I'm here, listen, I'm here for love, right? Like wherever people find love, I'm here for it. I don't, I don't have a problem with interracial relationships at all. I just want you to keep in mind that like, this is a guy who's talking about all the beautiful white women in Europe, like, right? He was married to Dorothy Dandridge, right? Dorothy Dandridge. And so I, I find it hard to believe that the standard wasn't just white. Right. And even the women who, you know, when they were showing those video clips of them young in Europe, those weren't a, a bunch of good looking women. Jerry, Jerry Fayard's wife was prettier than those women. Yep. And uh, obviously looks aren't everything, but looks do mean a lot to them because they keep on talking about the pretty women, the pretty mm -hmm. Swedish girls, the pretty 
uh, uh, French girls, the pretty Italian girls. So, uh, you know, you know, uh, I don't know what to say, y'all. This, this is just so bad. It's so bad. Look at, look at her. Look at this. He was married to Dorothy Dandridge. He was married to Dorothy Dandridge. And he loved beautiful women. And here we are. Oh. Here we are. I must have, I'm guessing I have a moderator. Do I have a moderator here? Oh, and you know what? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lady Lex. Lady Lex, thank you. My apologies. I did not acknowledge your super chat. Are you still in here? Thank you so much. And I'm asking if we have a moderator because I see a comment from our butthurt friend in my stream yard, but it's not showing up on my YouTube. So I would imagine that somebody blocked them, but I didn't do it. Mm. Yeah. Well, while know, he's getting but, blocked, um, y'all need to block Good Judy too because Good Judy has lost her mind. She said, she said, "Oh my God!" She said, "Oh my God, y'all not the Niglet brothers to uh, black <laughs> You did not have to say that, girl. Like don't get me shut down tonight. Listen, do not get me shut down tonight. This is terrible. Um. So anyway, yeah, this is crazy because I see the comment in my in my stream yard, but not on my youtube do y'all see a comment from our butt hurt friend you know what Brandon? probably um i see it he might have blocked you um and started he making comments because yeah because they do that and then they can chat in your chat but the only way you'll see it is through Streamyard. oh lord what a loser um uh, well do y'all want to know what he said or no yeah let's see let's see the dust okay so so here's our friend why do you hate us black men so much? Don't blame all of us for Ray Ray and Pookie leaving you for a higher quality white woman. Okay, so we will try to not blame black men for leaving us like white women who look like this. Um, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to get Pookie over Ray these, Ray that. <laughs> these higher quality white women. Um, Y'all don't be upset. I will try to not be upset um and again uh brandon i'm going to now block you but what you can do is submit a butthurt form to my email because i don't know your email address so i can't block you from there yet so there do y'all see that he's hidden by ty top miss history so now i do the blocking on this channel bitch. you don't get to block anything ho okay so i'm blocking you you pookie you're the pookie and the ray ray that's how yeah yeah you're the pookie and you're the ray ray because i said what i said okay but you are able to send um the butthurt form so that you can let us know just in which ways your ass is hurting from the content that you are hearing on this evening and I will have that sent over to the young lady who's working for the channel so that she can put it in just the right file of trash because you are trash. All right, let's hurry up and finish. So he's in love with a higher quality woman than all of you and me and Nyla. And we're gonna just try to uh, not be too emotional about it. We're gonna try to just go on and get through the stream um, we'll get through this. We'll get through this, sisters. Together. We'll do it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, together. Yeah. Here we are. Uh, let's let's figure this out. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought that I had pressed play. I didn't want to be crying on camera. Hold on. Let me press play. Companion, a woman sensitive to his private, sometimes moody personality. It's very difficult to get close to Harold. For you know, he's very very honest. He's also selfish. But he is a good person, good-hearted. He brought a lot of joy into my life. In 1989... Wait a minute. Did she just say that she got the same black man? 
did she um she said she got the same black man did she just say that she got the same black man okay so shout out to cynthia g you know what i mean um that was my first time ever hearing that phrase <laughs> um i think that that's what she said he's mm -hmm. not nice Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh but he's a good guy you know he's not nice <laughs> he's he's mean and selfish <laughs> But um, ladies, I need y'all to, you know, get out of your feelings. You cannot have this kind of guy because he wants a better white woman than you and your black ass. Okay, so it is what it is. I'm sorry. That's just the way the ball bounces. I don't make the rules. I just, I just relay them on YouTube. Here we go. Seventy-five-year-old Fayard was thrilled to receive a Tony Award for choreographing the Broadway dance review Black and Blue. It was one of many awards the brothers received over the next decade, awards recognizing them as irreplaceable national treasures. And no accolade was more prestigious than the one they received in 1991 when they were saluted in Washington, D.C. at the Kennedy Center Honors. The Nicholas Brothers, I'm just, uh, we owe to you, we owe so much to you, and we love you so much, Harold and Fayard. I cried, you know, all those honors, Kennedy Center honor and stuff like that, it, that sort of brought up things and, you know, Tears to my eyes. Here I am, 84 years old, and I'm getting all of these awards that I should have gotten years ago. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I just, I don't know what happened. Just, uh, just, I woke up and and I was old and I, I thought I was gone, but then I got an award. Something oh happened. my lord. <laughs> <laughs> what a dumbfounded tap dancing Negro. Man, ooh, but he's a good tap dancer. Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, he just doesn't know, man. He just, but what? <laughs> he never knows. His dumbfoundedness is okay. astonishing. <laughs> he never knows what the fuck is going on. Hey, Timmy, <laughs> how are you doing? Oh, man. <laughs> David, David says they are D-A-N's. Mm -hmm. Just as Negroes, <laughs> man, um, y'all are coming so close to saying the N word on here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just don't say that word, but my gosh. <laughs> but amid the applause came another painful loss. In 1998, he is his 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 hairline. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Because, see, this is what was happening in that picture that I was referencing earlier. The middle of that was already happening. He had, a, it was full around the outside, though. But the, the inside, it was very thin. And mm -hmm. so that, that's, what, uh, that's what I was witnessing there. And, uh, and I, don't, I still know the rest. Um, <laughs> yeah, not, not exactly the same pair of sunglasses, but... But a, a very similar pair of perfect nails. Uh, he definitely likes women's sunglasses. I don't know if Elton John was hooking him <laughs> up with sunglasses. I don't know, but well, he got uh, them from the Chinese beauty supply store, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. In an effort to save his hair, he you know picked up the wrong product there, but went on and you know just right by the register. Don't y'all don't play me. Right by the register, y'all know that's where the sunglasses are. Um, and he said, let me just go in and get this because this probably won't work for my hair. But I know these sunglasses, these will work for my face. So let me go in and get these. Uh, you know. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> While Fayard recuperated from a stroke, his devoted wife, Barbara, was hospitalized with an inoperable tumor. And three weeks later, Fayard lost his beloved companion to cancer. Okay, that is sad. Let's see what he doesn't know now. <laughs> there you go. He already looking confused, but let's see. I hope he don't say something happened. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. 
Let's see. <laughs> I miss her so much. Okay. We were married 28 years. And it was great 28 years. I was so much in love with her. And she was beautiful inside and out. It broke my heart when Barbara died because I just saw them as this eternal couple. And, the, and I saw Fayard not too long ago at an autograph session, and he's carrying on with that wonderful, cheerful attitude he has. Buoyed by the support of his family, including his sons Tony and Paul, Fayard has continued to make appearances around the world. In 1998, at age 84, he performed on stage with his granddaughters, 13-year-old Nicole and 10-year-old Kathy. My granddaughters have taken over, and they do the Nicholas Brothers <laughs> in skates. <laughs> skates. Seven decades, the Nicholas Brothers have electrified audiences and inspired fellow entertainers through the eloquence of their art. They demanded their full rights as human beings while scaling heights unsurpassed in the history of dance. I think I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I second the motion. He just looks so confused. I'm so fortunate to uh, have known them for all my life. We're still pals. We call each other all the time. And uh, we get together, we do a couple of steps, slowly, and <laughs> have a good time. Oh, dear gosh, it seems like uh, the power went out again. So we'll just take this time to say, hey, if you guys haven't liked this video, please like the video and um, support the channel. Let us know that you like these vintage dusty drills, I'm sure Ty will be back uh, shortly. Um, I just want everybody to be reminded of the last thing that, um, I'm not sure who this, which dancer this guy is, I, I forgot, I forgot his name, but the guy just said when we get together, he's talking about him and Bayard, you know, we get together and we do a few steps slowly. You know, in this climate that we're in now, saying that, two guys get together after saying that you call each other all the time. Um, saying that you get together and, and dance slowly, that, that, can't, that might not sound good in today's climate. I'm just saying, you know, you have to kind of clarify a little bit better than that in today's times because it could, uh, it could sound a little different if you know what I'm saying. But again, <laughs> Whoever said the Nigla brothers, somebody needs to put them on timeout. Um, David Coleman says, I'm sorry, why does Bayard look like a black Elmer Fudd, right? Oh, wow. Now I can't unsee it. I can't see it. Yeah, he did. He said, um, said he, they dance slow. Good Judy says, his voice sounds like Billy Barty who played a munchkin on. Oh, my God. Good Judy. He does, but he does have that, you know, like his, something happened, like weird voice. It's, it is, it's, it's really kind of cartoonish, uh, the voice he has. You're right. Absolutely right. So, yeah. Really interesting how um, they outlived their wives, right? Both of them. Um except for i think the guy that um i think the 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 last lady they listed as fair that was his companion and not his wife but yeah for Bayard, are you back yeah yeah well no that for, was his um, wife yeah. for, uh, for harold yeah yeah for harold yeah, the uh, last woman was just his, comp that strong his life face, companion um yeah. woman who is mm -hmm. better than black women <laughs> the better yeah. better quality white woman <laughs> exactly <laughs> Uh, that look, y'all. We're at the end, obviously, and I'm so tired of these um, power. <laughs> uh, and it, it, it literally just blinks, and then it knocks everything out. So like everything else, like it keeps on going, like nothing happened, but like it just knocks out my internet. Like I have to like redo everything. So it's been hell trying to edit <laughs> lately. You can imagine. 
I'm um, sure. Yeah, but anyway, and I don't know when it's going to stop because uh, this road is like nowhere near being built. So that sucks. Um, I'm about to drop the link for your channel in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Grown Women Vibes, AKA Nyla, do you have anything that you need to tell us that we need to be looking forward to on your channel? Oh, sure. I am working on content. You guys know I am, this is my time of the year. Everyone knows I am usually traveling this time of the year, visiting family and stuff like this in the Midwest. So it is kind of harder for me to get my pre-recorded content done. So I've been doing live streams when I can, um, but I am working on a couple of projects at the same time. Now, when you will get them done, I would say by next week, quite a few should be done. I'm kind of piecing them together, but I'm still trying to maintain with the live streams and stuff like that. So I appreciate the patience. Um, but we have some stuff coming up on Jesse Jackson um mm -hmm. some more current yeah we had some stuff with him coming up as well as bill cosby and the regular things that we normally do the trending and current topics and stuff like that excellent mm -hmm. um i have some bill cosby stuff coming up next month not this month um okay. and yes catherine this video is staying up i'll do some editing to take out the um like the places where I blacked out, and and I'll start I'll start cutting out the opening music for the people who are watching on the replay. So shout out to anybody who's watching the playback. Um, I'll start cutting that out. I'll I'll chop it up a little bit, but it'll be available. And and you can always watch it this way. I'll leave this one up, but I'll do an edited version as well and re-release that. Um, and for me. If you haven't already checked out my newest scandal, go and check that out. It's about the Pepsi 349 lottery scandal in the Philippines. I just released that yesterday. Uh, the views are not really given. So go and check that out, though, if uh, you want to see that. Um, I released an awesome video, okay, um, about um, Marcus Garvey. And I released a second video that accompanied that video. That is my rap video uh, called Going Back to Mali, which is a remix of Going Back to Cali. Uh, put a five in the chat if you've already seen that video. It's Going really good. It's I'm, funny. A, I'm a very good rapper. And I'm <laughs> sure that LL Cool J would be proud. I did it as a separate uh, video because of copyright issues. So I'm not getting any money on that, but I would like for you to see it because it's so good. It's uh, so cut good. out the trolls. Y'all want me to cut out the trolls? I might do that, Miss Kim. Thank you. Look, thank you all for coming. Y'all are thanking me. Thank you, Angela and Rare Enigma. Hey, Rebels, I see you too. And the Grim Reaper, always here to support. I appreciate y'all. Part one is, is it's in my live. Um, look on my channel, y'all. It's um, in the live, uh, when you go to my channel, here, actually, let's do this. And let's do this now for, uh, we'll do this with Nyla's channel. Let me share this tab. Because I do think that like with YouTube kind of separating everything, that if you don't like just necessarily know what you're looking for, and I know that I have like some, some viewers who are of an, a certain age, right? And so we don't necessarily like pay attention to all the, the ways things have changed. So like if you look at Grown Women Vibes channel, you see there are a bunch of tabs. So like she has her her um, home screen, she has videos. So these this is where the edited videos that she makes, um, the, those are here. And then shorts, like the little videos like we all see on TikTok, that's where that goes. And then live. The live streams, just like we are on now, that's where the part one of this video is going to be on my live streams tab. If she has playlists set up, then there you go. Old school gossip, vintage dust. That's what we're doing. These guys are vintage dust. Um, community tab, things that she wants to tell y'all. Like, oh, I'm going live with Ty. Let me share this so that my subscribers can come see. This is where you know y'all can keep up with what's going on, or we might just want to say little things to you. So that's the community tab. And then channels, a lot of us don't really use that. And then if you want to see, like, usually, like, this is where we'll put our email address and know exactly what we're talking about on the channel, blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah, that's where you would find it uh, on my channel in the live tab, part one. 
is there. And and I'm saying this like so that you'll know this for every content creator, right? It's not just for my channel or just, you know, I'm not trying to be rude. And I'll go on and drop the link to part one. And for people who are going to watch the replay, I'll put the link for part one uh, in the description box as well. Um, so yeah, just wanted y'all to know that that's what, um, that's what that is. So that being said, y'all, um, that's all that I have here. Let me, uh, let me go and, uh, go to my channel, uh, and I'll go to my live tab. And so here was part one. So I'll open Hi, that you doing? and I'll put the link. So that if y'all just want to grab that link right now, I can grab the link there. Okay, so there's a link to part one if you all missed that. Um, and you know what? Uh, I agree. Uh, thank you, Biz Minded. I appreciate you for, for you. saying that. And and I appreciate you, Catherine. Um, I, I do enjoy creating content uh, with Nyla and um, you know doing these live streams with her. I appreciate her energy. I appreciate her honesty. Uh, I appreciate um, the way that she's able to look at things. And she and I don't agree on every single thing. Uh, we don't. But um, I respect her. I appreciate the way that we do disagree when we disagree. It's still done in a respectful way. So I, I love uh, having her here on this channel. Hello. And this is something that we do every other week. This was her idea. Uh, and I love it because it works so well for me and for my content. And on the weeks that she hasn't been able to do it with me, I'll do it by myself. And y'all still come and engage with just me. And so I appreciate her. The vintage dusty drill is what she called it. So this is this is her idea. So we go, do this back and forth every other Wednesday. Next week, it will be on her channel if she if her travel schedule allows. And then it will be back over here. Uh, we are doing uh, Real Housewives of Potomac content together. We said that we were going to restart this week, but then I, I told her that. And then I wasn't thinking, oh, yeah, it's not on this week because of the Super Bowl. <laughs> so next week <laughs> we'll be on with Real Housewives of Potomac. Uh, it's the reunion. So that'll be coming to an end. And uh, I am Raphael will be with us uh, for that. Um, and I'll be live streaming more and more, even with this power going out, you guys. Uh, this is terribly frustrating, but I'm going to be doing some more live streams. So like, just stay tuned. Um, and I'm going to be bringing back my... Um, my ordinary people scandals too. And put a five in the chat if you witnessed my ordinary people scandal um, masterpiece theater. When I do it that way, the reenactment, um, the one that you all really liked who saw it was the one of the, the lady whose uh, like limbs were frozen. Y'all really liked that reenactment. So, and I've done it with another one as well. The lady who was killed by her preacher husband because he didn't like her short, tight dress. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be bringing those back. I got a lot of requests for those for the ones who saw it. So, like, maybe that can be like a little trademark thing. Um, thank you, Cora Sal. Look, I know that you rock with me. I appreciate it, you know. Um, and look, everybody isn't everybody's cup of tea. I know that I appreciate the Blue Heart Gang for coming here and supporting when Nyla's here. And sometimes y'all support when she's not. Sometimes y'all are just going to come for Nyla. And all of that is fine. You know, people like who they like. And 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 look, all of it's good for me. Thank you, uh, Rebels. I love my, my reenactment. If you have not seen my Masterpiece Theater, you're missing out, okay? Um, as a matter of fact, you know, let, let's see. Um, where's my Masterpiece Theater? Hold up. Because it's so good. Like, everyone should know my Masterpiece Theater. Let's see, videos. So the last time that I did an Ordinary People scandal, it's been a minute, but this is the one. So this story right here was about a woman who uh, froze almost to death. Like, her body was hard uh, when they found her. She was in, like, negative 12 degree weather and and her limbs had, well, her fingers had to be cut off and so did her feet. So she married a guy who was like, basically she was like so thankful because she learned how to cook because her husband was like, you're gonna learn how to cook a meal. So I did a reenactment. This week in um, 1960. 
I'll skip to the reenactment, but go back and watch this whole video because her story is a trip. And I do actually want to do some more content on her. So here, let me just get to where my reenactment is. And we can watch that together. Then we can go. Hopefully the power will stay on, not blink. Here we go. Two whole days. Can you imagine? I can. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to Ty's Masterpiece Theater. Okay, so what I just said was that um, he locked her in the kitchen for two days and told her don't come out till you fix a meal. That's that's how she learned how to cook. So here we go. Whew. I sure am tired after a long day of pain. Tired and hungry. <laughs> okay, so I know that you may be thinking, what's wrong with William? Well, he had a bit of a humpback and vitiligo. Jet didn't say that, but y'all know I get down to the facts. So that's neither here nor there. Back to the show. Whew. I sure am tired after a long day of pain. Tired and hungry. I'm hungry too, baby. What you gonna pick us up for dinner tonight? I could go for some fish. I love that place downtown that has those crispy fries. Mm, mm, mm. You could go for some fish. Go for some fish. The only thing you going for tonight is that kitchen door. Now, Dorothy May, I went and bought a whole bunch of groceries and it ain't a man's place to cook them. But William, I ain't got no fingers. I ain't got no feet. I'll tell you what you do got, a bunch of excuses. No fingers, no feet. I've been listening to that for the last nine years and I ain't taking no more. You about to get in that kitchen and fix me some food. But William, I don't even know what to do. What you want me to cook? Everything. I got some beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb. And I want it all. Oh Lord. That's right. Call on him cause he the only one going to help you tonight. Now get in that kitchen and keep calling on him. And don't call on me till my plate is hot and ready. <laughs> don't push me. Ah, ouch. Ah. <laughs> now I guess I'll just rest up a little while that woman do what a woman's supposed to do. Whew. William, here's your food. Everything you wanted. Greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb. Well, you see it. Mm. These greens are so good. You really put your foot in these, girl. William, you know I ain't got no feet. Why you want to go and say something like that? Oops, oops. I, I, I'm sorry, baby. It, it, it's just an expression. I, I mean, it's really, really good. And that is exactly. Okay. That is my masterpiece theater. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I reenact the craziest stories that I can find from old issues of Jet Magazine or whatever, but uh, usually it's Jet. So that's it, y'all. Um, unless you have some closing words, shall we get out of here? We shall. And I shall do more of these biz minded. Um, that being said, y'all have yourselves a good night and a merry little Christmas. And black women, stop hating on these uh, white women who look so much better than y'all. Okay, stop. It's bad look. Don't be like that. Okay. All right. <laughs> that being said, uh, I will holler. Love y'all. Peace out. I kind of want to do a rap, but I'll wait. Peace.